I'm gonna show you how to create this slider that rotates in 3D space. So it rotates whenever you click the next and previous buttons. So this is one idea. And then another idea is to create something like this that rotates whenever you hover over it or based on where you hover over it on the screen. So we're gonna start out by creating a 3D box just so you can understand the components of how these two work. And then we are going to go into creating the actual slider itself along with the interactions involved. So let's start out by creating the 3D box. I'm gonna set the scene by just adding a 100 viewport height div and then center, align, and justify. So all of these are going to need a few things. One of them is 3D space. This 3D space is basically the environment that these objects live in. So we are going to add, click these, these three dots down here and give it some children perspective. Anywhere from 400 to 800 will probably be pretty good. Okay, now we have, I'm gonna open this up so you can see it. So now we have 3D space, we are going to add a controller. This is the point of origin that the objects are going to rotate from and we're just going to make it a one pixel by one pixel okay next we can add our object so because we're creating a 3d box just for example's sake um, let's just add a 3d box parent and then we can go back to the controller here and center it because we'll need to do that in order for um, things to work correctly and we should be good to go here. We're also gonna add, make it relative. Okay, so we have our 3D box parent. Now we need to add the sides of our 3D boxes. So let's start with the front. Um, our front, the front of the box is gonna be called front. Let's add a background color so you can actually see it. And then let's make it 150 by 150. So a square has all sides the same length and width. So let's just keep them all 150 by 150 and let's move on to the side. So. We'll add a right side, and let's see here. We'll just call it right to make it simple. We'll make it absolute, and we'll make it full. Okay, so it's the right width and height, but it needs to be rotated because it is a 3D object. So we're gonna rotate it on the Y axis. And just to show you what's going on here, let's take our controller. Anytime we need to rotate the object, we'll rotate the controller and not the objects themselves. So we'll transform we'll rotate and then we can rotate on the X and the Y axis. So as you can see here, it is a, in a 3D object. However, we need this object to be on the right side over here. So let's take this right object and let's move it on the X axis. So we'll move it 75 pixels since that is half of 150. And okay, it's now in the right position, but we need this front side to be over here. So we can actually move it on the Z axis. The Z axis is forward and backward. So I just moved it backward. Let's change it to 75 and now it is in the correct space. Okay, we can take our controller at any time and rotate it just to see how things are, do things are uh, going and it's not gonna mess anything up on our side. So let's take the right side and let's duplicate it and call it the left. Um, all we need to do is we need to change it from 75 to negative 75 and it should be in the right spot. I'm going to change the shade a little bit just so we can see um, the different sides a little bit easier here. And then now what we can do is we can take this front side and add a back side. So let's duplicate the class, make it back. We do have to change this one to absolute since the front was not absolute beforehand. And all we need to do again change this from 75 to negative 75 and we now have our box this is these are the basic components that we need to create a rotating slider now we could go ahead and add a top and a bottom i'm not going to because um i don't want to waste your time but basically we do the exact same thing and just rotate it on the x-axis rather than the y-axis and just position it correctly Okay, so now that we have all this, let's delete our 3D box parent. We know how this works. We know the, the basic idea of it. So let's delete it. And now let's start over and create this slider. So we can see that this slider has gaps in between. Um, 
That's one difference. There are gaps in between. And number two, there are a lot more faces. In my case, I have 10 faces um, on this rotating slider. However, for example's sake, and probably because you're not going to have exactly 10 faces, I want this to be custom or I want you to be able to customize this for however you need. So for the example, we're going to use a slider that has six faces. Okay. So we're going to add a div block and let's actually move the controller back to its original position. Okay. And this is going to be our slider parent div. You can call it whatever you want. Um, okay. So we now have this parent div, we are now going to add the faces. However, we cannot just add the faces. We need to add parents to those faces. And I'll explain why in just a second here. So this is, go is going to be our parent face element. Okay, we just call it parent face. The parent face, let's give it a color. And then let's just give it a dummy width and a height. It doesn't need this, but I'm adding this so you can actually see what's happening. Um, so let's make it 100. So this is our parent face. Okay, let's add another parent face and let's make it uh, two. So we'll add a combo class of two, make it position absolute. And then we need to go in here and make this relative so that when we position absolute, it'll go right to the corner of the slider parent div. So this is our parent face number two. Let's make it a different color so we can see the difference um, differences. And then what we need to do is we need to add a rotation. So I mentioned that my, my slider has 10 faces. So if we take 360 divided by 10, that is 36 degrees. So every time we turn, it's 36 degrees. However, in our case, we're only adding six faces. So we need to take 36 divided by six, and that is 60. So we're gonna add 60 degrees on the Y axis. That is super important for you to understand in order for you to customize it how you need uh, to customize your slider. So that is it. That's all we need for parent face two. We're now gonna add parent face three. So we'll duplicate the class and just call it three, make it a different color so we can see. Again, the color does not matter because we're actually gonna take it away. And then we'll take our 60 and we can actually take 60 and add 60 to it. And that is 120. So we now have three faces and I'll show you just in 3D view what's happening here. We have three faces that are rotating on this point of origin, which is our controller. These parent faces just make it easier for us to be able to add our interface elements. Um, so before we go in and add our three additional faces, let's just go ahead and add the elements themselves. So um, let's change this back to um, normal. All right, let's go to our parent face one and let's add a div to it. So this is going to be our actual element where our uh, elements are actually going to live. So we'll do 30 by 15 viewport width and we'll call this face. Um, and then we'll add additional faces inside of these other parent faces. Now, one thing we need to do again is we need to go to our slider parent div and we need to center align and justify so that these faces are actually, um, actually we'll do that on our parent face. Um, hopefully that'll do it. That'll do the trick. Yep. Um, okay. So our face is now centered to this reddish pink parent. So we've got 30 viewport width by 15 viewport width. Um, let's add a color so we can actually see. Let's add a pink. Okay. That is our first element. However, we want it to be out here. We don't want it to be on this, uh, this X axis. So what we can do is we can take the face and we can trans add a transform and move it on the Z axis. I'm actually going to move it. We'll say 10 viewport width for now. We can always adjust it later. Um, but okay, it should now rotate whenever we rotate. There we go. Perfect. Um, let's go ahead and add our second face. So we've got our face here. Now we're going to add a face to the green one. So we, add, we copy and paste, we've got our face, and let's add a combo class. Okay, the reason why it's not showing is because our parent face is not positioned as relative. So we need to add a relative position to it. Um, actually, that's not correct. Uh, let's see here, what do we got going? 
Um, so we've got this parent face. We've got two, let's see here. Um, oh, okay, I see, it is working. We just can't see it because it's in a weird angle. So let's rotate it down just a little bit so we can actually see it, there we go. Okay, it is working. Um, let's go back here and we don't need that. Okay, so the way we can fix this, we can see that they're crossing in weird paths. We obviously don't want that. So we want them to be further out towards uh, the outer circle. So let's move it more than 10. Let's make it something like 18, eh, a little bit further. Let's say 20. Okay, let's take our controller and let's rotate it back. And then let's see how it's rotating. That is perfect. The cool thing is that whenever I change the face value here, for our first slide, it's actually gonna change it for all of the slides because we have combo classes, which is super neat and it makes for less work. So let's go to our third parent face. Let's add it and let's just change this um, to our third combo class so we can change the color so we can see what's happening. And it is working, working exactly as we expected. It's rotating uh, around that point of origin. Again, these colors are here just so you can see what's happening. You can get rid of them in the future and you can add whatever styling you want to these elements. So we'll add a div block. We'll call this one slide one. You can do whatever you want. I'm not gonna go through and style them because I think that would be a waste of your time. Um, so let's just keep moving on and I'm going to really quickly add the other faces. So let's go here to our parent face and let's one, two, three, and we'll call this one four. And let's see, 120 plus 60 equals 180. That's good. Let's go to our parent face here and this is going to be five. And what was the last one? 180 plus 60 is 240, which is perfect. And then let's go to our final one and let's make it six. And then we're going to make it uh, 240 plus 60, which equals 300. Okay, we now have our 3D slider that is rotating in a 3D space. Super neat. It's working just as we expected. Now, if you have a different amount of faces, again, just to recap, take 360, divide it by the amount of faces. If you have 20 faces, 360 divided by 20 equals 18 degrees. So these parent faces, instead of adding 60 every time, you just add 18, and then you would have to adjust the size uh, of these faces to match uh, however your slider fits into place. Um, and you can, you can completely customize this however you want. Okay. Now let's go into the interactions to show you how that works. So let's add a, a mouse hover over action. Um, so when we hover over this large div block, this whole page, we want a mouse move over element. We're gonna play a mouse animation and this is going to be our interaction. Name it whatever you want. And we're gonna rotate the controller. This is what we've been rotating the whole time because everything inside of it will rotate with it. We'll add a rotation and then we'll rotate it negative 180 on the Y axis and then 180 uh, the, other, the other way. So we can see that when we hover over it, it's basically gonna follow our mouse wherever our mouse goes. And then if we wanna add a little bit of an X rotation, we can add a uh, 10 degree and then negative 10 degree based on where your mouse is up and down and then if you want to you can add a little bit of easing into it so basically we'll go in here and it looks pretty good the sizing needs to be updated a little bit but again like i said it's super easy to update the sizing because we've made this uh made combo classes so um it's really easy to update everything all at once maybe we need to push things back on the Z index just a little bit. So we'll say like, I don't know, we'll say 21. Um, they'll be a little bit closer together. Again, you can customize this however you want. Okay, so we now have that done. The final thing is to show you how to rotate these whenever you click buttons. So let's add some buttons. We'll add some text links. You can add them wherever you want on the page. Um, this is going to be our previous button. Um, so we'll call this, yeah, we'll call this previous. The class does not matter. Um, 
So we'll add previous here and then just let's see we'll go to the ID the ID does matter. So we need to add a prev dot dash button. This is what um, our code is going to be looking for. Um, so we'll have prev dash button and then let's copy and paste and just add a next button. So this is going to be our next again. It's looking for this ID, but our ID needs to change to next dash button. And then let's just position absolute up here on the top right and then let's change the text okay and then the final thing we need to do here within webflow is we need to add a rotation dash id to our controller again the class does not matter it's the rotation dash id that our code is going to be looking for so the reason why we cannot do this within webflow's tools is because when webflow does not know how to add rotation on click you can tell it to rotate to a specific degree but you cannot tell it to add rotation right so what we can do is we can go into the custom code uh, i want to preface this with I did not create this code I found it online and customize it to my own liking um, okay so what we need to look for is we have the next dash button we have the rotation ID and then we have the previous dash button um, now the rotation ID is set to 36 that would be for 10 sides we have uh, six faces which is 60 degrees so basically just update these numbers as you see fit and the only other thing you need to take note of in this code is that there is a transform ease um, on the rotation dash ID div and it's a two second ease. Um, okay, so let's save it and we'll need to publish it in order to see these changes. Uh, so let's see if everything is working correctly. Okay, when we click previous, it should rotate 60 degrees as it does perfectly. And again, these are there's no custom styling or anything you can update these later uh, but let's see the next button the next button is working perfectly and that should do it I, I would love to see what you guys do with this if you guys take this and make something really cool put it in the comments below or email me or just let me know of it somehow because I would really like to see what you guys do with this um, again, you can do some really cool stuff with it. I created this website academy where you can click through my videos and watch them um, very simply. Also on my homepage, there's this little animation and interaction, uh, which I'm going to be uh, hopefully honing in and updating um, over the next few weeks and months. But uh, I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, again, I may not be able to help with the custom code, but if you have any questions about the, the web flow elements or the web flow interactions, please let me know and I'll try to help be as helpful as possible. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks guys.